Hello, my name is Laura, also known as Lala. And I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. And this is the Nick Girls. <laughs> I totally like threw off the beginning this time. <laughs> yeah, Eight. this is uh, attempt number two for the evening. Sometimes our software just decides that it is not in the mood to deal with us, so. And sometimes Skype wants to give us the middle finger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So anyway, it's episode 244. It is March the 9th, 2015. And yeah, we already introduced ourselves, so we can talk about knitting. We can. Um, All right, so I am taking the Knit More Girls approach to talking about uh, works in progress and that anything that gets a stitch or more knitted on it can be discussed so i right now that's a fabulous idea it is <laughs> i don't know why I it's jasmine and Gigi. they're so smart yeah. and they have a wonderful audio podcast if you are not familiar with the knit more girls they are lovely and very informative and very sweet yes and i sometimes just assume that you guys know everything that i know so that's why <laughs> laura and i have each other to remind you to <laughs> to remind each other to actually tell you what we're talking about. There you go. Anyway, so I am working on a vanilla bean sock. This is the first one. It's been finished for, well, I say finished. It's been off the needles for a little over a week. Um, and I've started the second one. I've only put about three rows on it since you saw it last. But I've knit some. So let's discuss ribbing with stripy yarns. I tend to, when I'm doing ribbing, Ribbing with stripy yarns, if I remember, I put a plain row where the mm -hmm. color changes. Yeah, or like a, well? a knit row Yeah. in between. I do not, um, primarily because when I start a pattern, if I try to change that pattern, everything goes wrong. So I tend to just stick with the ribbing. The knit. I don't care that you can see the purl stitches. Because um, when you purl, it brings up that little bump of right. color into the next row um I'm waiting for it to focus so you can actually see nope not uh, there we go there you go so you so can you see, can see that gray. gray like i'm pointing at it like you can <laughs> actually you can see where i'm pointing no we're side by side <laughs> uh, yeah so if you wanted to you could knit a plain row um right at the end of where your color changes and then once you get back around, you would um, start the ribbing again. But I would forget, and I would just keep going knitting, and then I would have no ribbing. So that's because I am very flighty that way. But anyway, this is the yarn. It is You're fishnets. I am a flibberty chip it. It's the best word ever. <laughs> From Joe versus the volcano. That's a wonderful movie. <laughs> and this is the after the storm colorway of fishnets. Um, I've knit with her yarn. I don't know, four or five times. It's always a great knit. She has um, a knit girl's colorway, too. I actually just pulled it out to wind soon. It's yep. sitting right over there. With Take the 10 with the knit girls. It's a 10-stripe colorway. That's well, pretty cool. So anyway, there's that that I worked on. And then I also worked on my um, tank. What is it called? Ethereal tank. Yeah. And this, okay. I the printed out the, right? yes, it's out of Hazelnut's Lace. Um, I've, Nitty has this new feature, well I say new, it's a year or more old, where when you print the pattern you can say just, Only the essentials. Yeah, only the essentials. Oh, that's good. So that's that you don't one. get all of the ads and the weird spacing and yeah. all the pictures. You just get one picture and the instructions. Mm -hmm. So this is the tank. It's, it's difficult to see in the picture, but it's got a lace trim at the bottom, lace up the sides and under the arms, and then lace around the neck. So what I did last week, I had just finished the cast on and was working through the beaded. Um, I was adding a row of beads at the bottom, which is not in the pattern, but yeah. I felt like it, it would, weight, right, so it it would hold the edges down so it wouldn't curl. Yeah. So I have two skeins. So pretty. This is in the um, Ruby Love colorway. These were sent to me by uh, my friend Megan, who is Crafty Pancakes. She's a sweetie, that Megan. She is, and she loves her some hazelnuts, let me tell you. She does. And I really haven't gotten a lot done on this. I've gotten, you're supposed to do the lace repeat, which is six rows. You're supposed to do it depending on your size. For my size, I have to do it six times. 
and I've only gotten four done. That's pretty, though. And I was just trying to decide whether or not I wanted to just keep it at four or go to six. Um, and for me, it's all about proportion because I'm a large person and I have a large midsection. And so I was trying to sort of decide whether smaller Yeah. would work better. And in this instance, I don't think so. I think another two repeats of lace is the way to go to make it proportional to me. So that's like two inches there. How many inches is that? Um, I have my handy dandy in the more girls podcast tape. Thank you. This podcast <laughs> is not supported it is by not the Knit sponsored Girls. by the knit more girls, but, um, it is with the lace. It's about two and a half inches. So Okay, it would be so another inch another and inch. a quarter. Yeah. So that would make it 3.75 inches. Yeah. So, and how are you doing like 15 inches up to the underarm? Uh, it doesn't say, or it does. I just haven't gotten there. That would be a really ill-written pattern if it didn't say. <laughs> um, let's see. Split for armholes. That goes all the way up. About 12 inches plus this. So 12 plus a little over 3 is about 15. A little more than 15. Um, Yep. So you're doing like a third, a fourth, yeah. fourth. And that's up to the underarm. And then there will Yeah. also be the bust and the top. So anyway, um, the lace isn't particularly challenging. I just, I've been doing, I've been sewing. I've been doing a lot of sewing. So I'll show you guys that in favorite things. But, um, She's been busy making stuff for me, which is very important. <laughs> This is the month of my birth. this is, this is true. I'm only allowed to work on Laura oriented objects in the month of March. <laughs> so, I'm not self-centered or spoiled rotten at all. uh, <laughs> so those are the items that I've been working on. All of the details are in the project notes, including needle size, yarn, pattern, all that. So. Cool beans. It's all you. That's it? You're done? That's all I've been working on. Two things? It's knitting related. That's pretty awesome, though. Um, because they're like big, well, one's a big project, one's a small project. That's kind of perfect. Yeah. But you have like one that's kind of mindless and one one that, I can travel with and one that yeah, I will that's not take with me. <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> that's super smart, though. Did you, so for Kobe's birthday, did you take, you didn't take anything to the bowling alley? I did not. Uh, my son Kobe turned 12 this week. And it is clear that Laura is trying to finish a row because she's making it tall. Oh, no, 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 totally not. I'm working in the round. <laughs> There's, there's no start or end to this row. yes, he he wanted to go and have a bowling party, so he invited some of his friends. And they usually, when I get around a whole lot of kids, very quickly, I feel the need to vacate the area or end up yelling like a crazy old person. And Get off my lawn. Yeah, but these were good kids. They didn't bug me at all. They were all very friendly and like they're right on the cusp of They're almost teenagers. they are and but they're still comfortable enough to like hug each other and you know They're almost there. They're sort still of like hang against each other and play on their phones but like leaning against each so they haven't hit that oh it's gay to hang with each other, you know, phase yet or whatever. And I say that mockingly. I don't feel that way, but That's what, you know, kids are, that's drilled into their head. So they haven't hit that point yet. So they're still, like, sweet. So I've got another couple months of that. I know a lot of sixth graders, Oh, I'm and sure. not more sweet. <laughs> like, <laughs> that is not a true statement. well, you know, and I was talking to one of the other moms there, and I apologize for getting off track, but um, we were talking about that because her son, he came, and he's, A little bit of a stocky kid, not not a lot, and he dyes the front of his hair a different color a lot. And th this particular week, it was pink. And you know, we started talking about school in the area, and I said, "Yeah, you know, it, he would get made fun of mercilessly that for that back where you know where I was from." And she said, "Yeah, yeah, I can see that, but." My son's school is K through 6, whereas a lot of the other middle schools are 6 through 8 Yep. or 5 through 8. And So I, they're like big men on campus. yeah, and I think It makes actually such a having difference. them held back with Yeah. the younger kids helps them be a little, like, less 
snotty. Oh know? man, I wish our sixth graders still had a recess. Yeah, and sometimes do. snap. Like <laughs> they I need wish back. I got it now. <laughs> but like sixth graders definitely still need like physical activity outside on a daily basis and they are it's amazing like that sixth grade year like at the beginning of the school year like i have some girls that still bring dolls yeah and then i have some girls that would not be caught like i can yeah. tell when they go to sit next to one of those girls i mean they're like oh, okay yeah you know like they are much more mature sixth grade is such a weird year yeah it's so weird and then that summer between sixth and seventh they totally change they grow up don't tell me that <laughs> he's already gonna grow up yeah yeah he's already like three inches shorter than me that's it oh anyway um this is knitting so why don't you talk <laughs> about your knitting <laughs> okay i am working on this two color beanie it is out of check heaton australian super fine merino and it is their eight ply it's um a really interesting yarn it's nice. I really like it. And it's super fine. So, um, I read the book earlier. <laughs> it's not really a book. It's the promotional material that they sent because they did send this to us. Yeah. And, um, it's really interesting. Also, you get pretty pictures of Merino. Like, hey, I'm Merino, she... Pictures, yeah. Yeah. And the mill pictures are really interesting, too. Um, it's funny... I don't know if, like, some of it's lost in translation a little bit, but, like, so this is an Australian yarn, um, and it's endorsed by the Australian Superfine Wool Growers Association, so the fiber itself is from Australia. Mm -hmm. And then it is spun in, it's milled into singles, I believe, somewhere else. And then this mill um, in Wine Guardia, I'm totally butchering that, and I apologize. Um, so to, it says it arrives at the mill in a single thread, and by winding, twisting, reeling, dyeing, backwinding, balling, and packaging the wool, it is it satisfies the le legislative requirements to be wow. <laughs> classified as made in Australia. So that was interesting to me. Um, but the mill... There's some great pictures of the mill. Yeah. And there's actually, um, like, a chart that tells you, because merino itself is pretty fine. Um, and merino micron-wise can go from, like, 18 microns or even 14 microns all the way up to, like, 24 microns. And microns is... Um, the width in millimeters. Yeah, how soft. And it get, has to do with how soft the fiber is. So a lower number is softer. I feel like millimeters is not accurate. It is the width of something. Micrometers, maybe. I know it's not millimeters because yeah, 18 would be... millimeters would be 1.8 centimeters, and that would be a, a fast <laughs> So it has to do with how soft the fiber is. Yeah. The lower the number, the softer the fiber. Yes. So all this is between 18.5 and 15.6. So it's the softest of the soft because every sheep, um, in order to get a micron count for your sheep, you have to actually, because sheep, even within a breed, vary so much. Right. And it varies on the season, too. Like, if uh, if a ewe is pregnant that year, their fleece might not be as soft as the year before when or they weren't pregnant. Or if there's a drought or if their yeah. diet if changes. They, yeah, exactly. If their diet changes or if they're stressed for some reason, mm -hmm. like there's a lot of predators in the area that year or something like that, that can totally change it. So anyway, you have to get each and every fleece tested with a micron count to um, determine what the actual microns are. And um, all these fleeces are 18.5 to 16, 15.6 microns, mm. which is really, really soft. Yeah. So it's a nice soft fiber. Um, because it is Merino, it is a shorter staple. And it's going to take dye a little bit more matte, which is perfectly awesome in this case. Yeah. And it's a nice cable structure. And like I said, it's super soft. So I'm knitting this pattern, but I'm not because this pattern is supposed to be knit flat. And Laura's a rule breaker. I'm always a rule breaker. Um, I don't knit things flat and then seam them if I can knit them in the round. Yeah. So I'm knitting it in the round. Um, I'm just on the ribbing. 
and I am using 3.75 millimeter needles. Size which, five US. There you go. Leslie remembers all that stuff. That's why I keep her around. <laughs> That's the only reason. <laughs> that in <and> post production. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many reasons. Um, so I'm just working on the ribbing, and it's kind of set here. It came as a kit, which yeah, was so super. What's the body color going to be? Mustard. Oh, cool. So it's gray and mustard. It's going to be like my Steelers hat. It's kind of Harry Potter-ish, too. Although mm -hmm. the colors are mixed. The houses' colors are mixed. Never mind. It's not the Harry Potter-ish at all. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> the gold could be for Gryffindor, and the gray could be for Slytherin. Yeah. I forgot that Gryffindor is uh, red and gold. Red and gold. Um, I really like the tags, though. The tags on these are super cool. Yeah, they give it that fancy air. It's like um, the super thick cardboard and then there's that overlay bit the what is that vellum or whatever vellum there you go and then they've got like a tag that you can sew into your finished projects that you just snip this off where the seam is there's a seam right somewhere where'd it go i totally just saw it. maybe there's not a seam anyway yeah there is it's where the tags are attached there's a seam right there and you just snip that and then yeah. you can sew it into your projects and this is um Oh, it tells you to use the ribbon to make your garment label. <laughs> so clever, those Chuck Heaton people. And this goes stuck in the ball, so there's no staples or anything that could catch on your um, fiber, which I love. And it comes in this cute little bag, which is what I'm keeping it in right now. And it's chilling, like a villain. Um, so that is the first thing on my needles. And what else do I have? Oh, I have Jackaroo. You, hey, have you, so Renee, Knit Whiskers, sent me two magic wands. Oh, there's a joke in there that I'm just going to let pass. <laughs> so I have these purple. These are um, needle keepers. Look, I've got one that's just plain silver, too, uh, called the magic wand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's going to be the episode title. And uh, you stick your, they're, they're patent pending. And um, you stick your circular needles in this the little rubber. Like rubber grommet tube, and um, it keeps them. And then, like, you actually, there's an effort to pull yeah. them up, and they clink and clink in there. That's so a that, good idea for signatures, especially, because they tend to poke through every bag I put them in. Yes. Well, I have three of these now. If you want the not purple one. I have one. <laughs> I got one at, at House of Yarn when we were there last year. I know. But I have two purple ones, and they're amazing now. <laughs> so excited. And then I have the gray one. But anyway, so this um, this pattern, you have to put needles on stitch mark, like stitch holders a lot. So I had to go buy stitch holders today, and then I didn't use them. But this is the back. The back is completely done. And it is, cur I swear this will fit me. It's curling up quite oh, a bit. Oh, yeah, because it's stocking it, of course. Yeah. Um, so the back is completely done, except for these stitches I have on a holder. And um, it is Jackaroo. It's a free pattern by Amy Herzog. It was on Nitty.com. And so I started the front, and I had to stop. I'm, like, just through the ribbing on the front mm -hmm. because um, you go immediately into the pockets. Oh, okay. So um, how you do it is you put, like, the first two stitches, and then you knit across, and then the rest of the stitches on holders, and then you knit the pockets up. Yeah. And then you rejoin them. Mm-hmm. So, um, that is going to happen. I'd like to get the two fronts done this week, and then I just have the sleeves and the neck and all the finishing to do by the end of March. I don't know that I'm going to make this owl. Um, you can totally do it. Well, I have that, but then I still have a shawl and socks to do, too. You don't have to do the shawl. No, no, no. The like Kirsten, the okay, the, the Kirsten. Um, the shawl for my the, owl. Yeah, the mystery one. No, your shawl's getting done. That's not even an option. <laughs> and so uh, this is knit on... Uh, hold on, now I have to take them out. Those are Whoops. super clinky, dude. I know! I'm so irritated with myself. So six 4.0 millimeter signatures is what Jackaroo is being knit on. And it's being knit on um, out of some yarn that we got from Australia from a stash of a friend. Yeah. And it's a silk merino. It smells good. Like yarn. And wool. 
<laughs> and so uh, that doesn't have a bag. It's just kind of chilling. I need to put in an Amy Beth bag because I've got like one, two, three, four, five Amy Beth bags sitting around me. Just in that room. <laughs> Don't pretend like that's all you got. No, no, no. There's more over there. <laughs> that's uh, just in this area that I'm sitting here recording in. Uh, this is my new Amy Beth bag. Look at her. It's so cute. <laughs> it's Little Red Riding Hood. This is her like medium size wedge. And it's got the wolf and Little Red Riding Hood and some birds and mushrooms and trees. It's very cute. And she included the sweetest little note. Look. So um, it's an A.A. A. Milne quote. And then she wrote, shut up with your... I was going to say, A.A. A. Milne said, shut up with your beautiful face? What? <laughs> no, that's an Amy Beth quote. But it says, Piglet noticed that even though he had a very small heart, it could hold a rather large amount of gratitude. Which was a sweet, and then shut up with your beautiful face, Amy Beth. <laughs> <laughs> I love Amy Beth. She's super fun. I'm totally caught up on her episodes, and she could cut my hair anytime. I'm two episodes behind, but every time I watch her, I'm like, you're so pretty. I want to be like you. <laughs> um, Amy Beth is the host of the Fat Squirrel Speaks, which yep. is a video podcast, and she is hilarious. She is. And she's always up to some shenanigans of some kind of another. And she also makes the most wonderful bags. And she will be vending at the Knitting Pipeline Retreat. Yep. So the thing that is in this bag is this. It's kind of hard to see, especially when I pull it around. But it is the shawl by Kirsten Kapoor. It is the Irene Adler shawl. Mm -hmm. And I am knitting it out a skin of yarn out of a skin of yarn that's big, almost as big as my head. <laughs> This is Volmiza Lace. Ooh, look, it looks brown in that light. That's not true. It's like a super dark blue. It's a weird different skein. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like it's um, Moses, maybe. Yeah, it could be. But it's got like these um, brownish gray undertones to it that I actually did not notice in the skein. And then when I um, started knitting it and I was photographing it, you can see it like a little bit different hmm. cool that's a really cool shawl it um is really super easy to follow because how it's written it's written top down and you have eight different wedges in it and you increase on either side of the stitch markers so she has you place eight stitch markers and you increase on every other side every eight rows so you're increasing 16 stitches every eight rows um so it really is and the charts for what's in between the stitch markers so it's really easy to make sure you're on track yeah. um and i added the beads it's not supposed to be beaded but um on the center line of decreases on the chart i added some silver beads I'll give it a nice weight do that again yeah and it's got this faux cable that's super cool it's three stitches and you pass the third stitch on the left needle over Mm -hmm. Then you knit one, and then you yarn over, and then you knit one again. And it makes that cool faux cable. It's pretty. Yeah. It, um, the only downside is it is patterned on both sides. Hmm. So it, um... Kristen Kapoor is a little notorious for that, isn't she? <laughs> she, uh, wants you to pay attention. <laughs> so... Now she does, um, I really like it because she does shawls with ribbing a lot. Mm-hmm. And that's what it is. Like, the ribbing is patterned on both sides. Oh, okay. So, um, it's not, like, lace on both sides, but you do have to pay attention because... And as it grows, the ribbing grows out. So, there's my ribbing line, and you can see it grows out. Yeah. So, it's really well incorporated into the pattern. And it's the same thing on what I didn't touch this week, which is my other Kirsten Kapoor shawl. Because I'm a fangirl. <laughs> but this is, um the same way and that it's got let me find it yeah it's got ribbing oh yeah in between the pattern kind of like yeah that grows out as the pattern changes so this has 22 rows left in it um to get the owl done i have to get this done a sock done and the sweater done <laughs> so we'll see what i do this weekend this week i'm off i'm on a staycation so, um, Irene Adler, this was the mystery shawl from this year that I did not touch this week, um, in a fat squirrel bag. This was my birthday fat squirrel bag, like, two years ago, when this was, like, the prototype bag when she was first getting I was gonna started. I say, that was one of her first bags. Yeah. And it was a birthday present. 
about Amy Beth. She's so sweet. Um, so I think that's it for me for what's on the needles. I want to cast on a pair of socks in the worstest of ways, but I'm trying to be good and finish things that are on the needles. I've done really well so far. I've done decent. I'd like to if I don't get the, I'd like to get the shawl and jackaroo done this month, even if I don't get the hazelnut socks done. Um, that would make me even if I completely fail on my owl because it was like a super overachiever owl. I need to stop doing super overachiever owls. How many times have you said that and then you continue oh. to do them? <laughs> well, like you can do owls without being like super overachiever about it. Like there's minimums that you can do and I just need to like start with the minimum and then if I need to add an extra project to make it more worth like more substantial. And what I'm talking about for those of you who haven't watched the show before because I'm bandering about words like owl. I am involved in the Harry Potter House Cup group which is a and, group on Ravelry. Yep, it's a group on Ravelry, and it is um, very, like, the minimum requirement is that you knit one project for a class a month. Mm -hmm. But then there's, like, crazy pants people like me who, like, have to overachieve, although I've not done any Quidditch, which is usually, like, shorter time frame mm -hmm. projects. Um, they're doing, like, time trial projects this time where, like, you had to knit, like, the barley hat in, like, three days or something, and I just, I don't need a barley hat. There are, like, an option of three or four patterns yeah. that were knit, and then um, some crochet options as well. But, like, I need to work on my owl, so I've not been doing Quidditch, which makes me, uh, which makes it sad, because then my, I don't know that Slytherin's going to win Quidditch. I'm Slytherin, too. So, <laughs> I know that's a shocker to so many people. But, um... Anyway, that's what I have on my needles. I did not finish anything this week. Me neither. Okay. Um, I did do some spinning. I'll talk about yes, that real quick. Talk about your spinning because I feel like I've been talking for forever. So I, I talked last week about a D stash that I was doing, and thank you to everybody who has bought some stuff. There's still some things out there, but a lot of it has sold. Um, and so while I was going through and culling items for my D stash. I got rid of a lot of things that I still really liked. I just, I liked other things more. So I'm trying to um, pare down and do... You're cutting out the chaos that surrounds the things that you really love. I'm trying, yes. I'm trying to make sure that all my crafting time is spent on things I really like. And not just go. spent on things because I bought them. So, um, Because you like them at some point. Because right. our tastes change over time. Sure, yeah. I mean, I may buy yarn one year, hate it the next year, and then the following year, love it again. So it's all about timing. So anyway, while I was going through, I came across um, these bats that I got from Arkansas Fiber Arts. I don't remember what year, but it was the first year they were in Hot Springs. So whatever that hmm. year was. So like, one, two, maybe four years ago? Yeah, at least three. Um, anyway, so there were seven bats all together. Apologize for the crinkling. And these are the four of them that I haven't spun. They're all one ounce bats. They're merino and something. I don't know if it's silk or tinsel. I think it was tinsel. I think it is too, because they were very inexpensive. I want to say where they were like seven bucks a piece or something. Um, and which is not really expensive when you inexpensive when you figure it out. That's well, twenty eight dollars for four ounces. But they're in separate bats. I don't know. I guess I felt like it was a pretty good deal. Um, but I have spun three of them already. It's hard to tell. But there is a light pink and then a slightly darker pinky purple. And then on the top, there's a more grayish purple. Um, so I'm spinning it on the Hanson. I'm spinning it just short backward draw, just an inchworm. Well, I guess it's short forward draw, not backward draw. And it's on the Hanson, on my Acreworks bobbins. Bobbin. Uh, it will be seven ounces altogether. And when it's finished, I have to decide what I want to apply it with. And I definitely want it to be a natural. Uh, Laura mentioned um, this beautiful brown natural that Gales Art has, which I think is an alpaca silk blend, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And then also have some really beautiful natural white um, wool 
that yeah, I've so got. Three fleeces. I do, but I wanted it to be like a silky blend to go with the silky feel of this fiber. So, okay. um, anyway, I still have a ways to go spinning this first. Um, I'm not going to chain ply it because it's. I feel like it would get too ropey at that point because it's with the tinsel or silk or whatever it is there's no bounce there's no like give you know it's very sturdy and I feel like it would become too rope like if I were to chain ply it so so because it's a drapey fiber you right. worry about and that has to do too with like how much twist you're putting into your singles that's true and I, I'm not putting a lot I'm only putting enough to hold it together really it's not super twist well you can't really tell the twist on this i don't know why i'm doing that anyway so take something to attach to it like a crochet hook if you have one right there uh, no it's all right but <laughs> basically that's i've only been spending like on i've watched a couple episodes of the new house of cards season and i'll spin while we watch that cool in bed one of the big upsides of the Hanson. <laughs> so do you put your Hanson on, like, when you spin in bed, do you have, like, a tray table that you Yeah, put I have on? a flat. Well, it's not a tray table, but it's, like, a flat book box, um, a little thin box that um, it sits on to keep it sturdy. Gotcha. So, anyway, that's all of my spinning. Okay. I have four, three, three things. Because my fourth is finished, but it's soaking. Anyway. So the first thing that I've worked on this week, really, is um, I moved the ladybug back into the kitchen. It's been kind of sitting in the living room with three other wheels, four other wheels, four other wheels, four wheels total, like three other wheels, but it was the fourth wheel in there. And so it wasn't getting the love that it deserves. And when I do stuff like put the tea kettle on, I'll sit and spin on it for five, six minutes. Um, or when I'm waiting for laundry to like fluff, because that's where my laundry room is too. I'll sit and spin. So I've been sitting and spinning on some Cormo. Mm -hmm. um, this was Cormo that Leslie and I bought the fleece at Maryland Sheep and Wool last year. Yep. It was the second fleece ever that I washed. Um, and at that point, my hot water tank was going. So it is not super. It's still pretty lanolin-y. I have um, that's a, a bunch, or, like a... a one of the bags that I washed is still pretty sticky. So I'm not even yep. going to run it through the carter yet. I'm just going to wash it again. See, I kind of decided that, that it was too sticky after I had run it through the carter. Right. So. I mean, plus you, this was your owl, right? You were in a bed <laughs> Yes. <laughs> As it goes. So for my owl, I spun... Um, well, you processed six, and carded. I processed and carded everything. And I had to flick this. So I washed it in kind of hot water with Dawn dish detergent. And then um, it's a, I wash like three like three times it gets washed in soapy water and then twice in rinses, and it's um, basically a dish pan that I fill with real as hot water as I can get, and then after the water is shut off, squirt and on, and then sink the um, I have like those pinchy um, I don't know what you use in the kitchen like the pinchy like a bag clip. No, like an actual, like, um, <laughs> what is this? that's the motion that they do. Uh, like not spatula, but like what you would use to like turn things out. Yes, there we go. Okay. That's more like this. I don't know what this is. That's the motion that tongs make. Okay. Um, so I have some tongs and so then I sink it down in there. And so, um, then I dry it on my drying rack take it out, squish all the water, gently squeeze the water out, roll it in a towel, and then leave it to dry. And then I flick carded it, which this is a flicker. It's still got cornrow in it. <laughs> Cause we got traces all... of your blood on there somewhere. Yeah, I know it does. I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised. It's not like rusty with blood. <laughs> um, so then you like flick out the locks and then I ran it through a drum carter. Um, and most of the little bats are around an ounce each. And, um, so I'm spinning them. And for the first owl that I did, I spun like 6.6 .6 ounces. And then for the second owl I did, <laughs> I spun like four ounces. So I have around 10 ounces done. Um, 
and I got, and I still have, this is the third bobbin. So I had two bobbins that were quasi empty. They're like half empty. And so then I decided to spin a third bobbin and I'll apply them together. Um, so this week I've been listening to Knit More Girls and I sit and I spin for a whole episode of Knit More Girls every morning because the morning light comes in and I have like two cups of coffee and I spin and it's perfect. It's perfection. That's awesome. Um, so I got this bobbin all the way done and I'm on another bobbin, but the ladybug's kind of grumpy. It needs a spa day, so I might do that tomorrow. I think like it's rocking a little bit, so I think I just need to go tighten all the yeah. things. But I also need to switch out the drive band, and on the ladybug, it's kind of unfortunate. Like, you have to unscrew it to get the drive band through. So, um, I'm going to wait till I'm done with this bobbin and give it a spa day so it's ready to go for SSK eventually. Because um, I do have a drive band to put on there. It uses, like, a black plastic drive band. Yeah. Um, so, I will spin. I have 13 ounces left. That's a long story. After spinning this, I have 13 ounces left to go. So, um, when I sit and listen to Knit More Girls, I get, like, around half an ounce done in an hour. So, I'll probably get another, how many days left do I have off? Like, five, six. So, I'll get, like, another three ounces done, and that'll take me down to, like, ten ounces. Um, eventually, I would like to get all of it spun by Marilyn Sheep and Wool. But I don't know that that's going to happen. It's going to be a three-ply. Um, so that's the first thing I've been working on. Then I have, like, all these bobbins around my house that need to be plied I'm lazy. So I applied one of them. Actually, I applied two. I applied the Angora. That's what's in the back. Ooh, that's really pretty. Thank you. This is, it's still wet. It is, um, Hello Yarn. You have this in this lumber colorway. Okay. It, it is a silk Polworth blend. It's got a light pink that goes into, like, an olivey, then, like, a gold. And, um, like a turquoise. It's all in there. So it's really pretty. I got 608 yards. That's awesome. Of a two-ply. So, um, the silk blends. And I spun this super fast. I spun this over Christmas when I was hanging out with the girls. So I had, wow. I was trying to spin, like, a DK weight. Um, <laughs> that did not happen. So, um, as we were watching Friendship is Magic... That's the pony one, right? Yeah, My Little Pony. That's uh, how this got spun. So that is, um, it was spun on the Hanson Mini Spinner on um, the Lace Flyer, which are the smaller bobbins, and then um, plied on the Hanson as well in my super fast plying method. <laughs> Everything you do spinning-wise is super fast. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't feel like that's true at all. And then, except on the Shock Reeves. The Shock Reeves is a beast. It is. It's like a Ferrari. It's crazy. So I spun um, this, like, 3.8 ounce Joanna Springs bat a little while ago. And I also spun some Lester Longwell, and I'm going to apply those two suckers together. So Joanna Springs got a wonderful video podcast. She's so funny yes. and sweet and such a knowledgeable farmer. And so she makes great bats and bags. Uh, knit Spin Farm. Yes. And so this was one of her bats. I have some other ones around here because she's fabulous. I have a green one I think I'm going to start next. And then this is Lester Longwool. Lester Longwool is a long wool. It's an endangered breed. Um, and I got this, or is it an endangered or critical? Anyway, there's not very many of them left in the U.S., and um, there is a farm near Paula of Knitting Pipeline in Tremont, Illinois, called Heritage Hill Farm. Yeah. And she allows you, when you go to Knitting Pipeline, to go to her farm and pet the sheep and buy things. So I got this Lester Longwell pin drafted roving. It was four ounces. It was ten whole dollars. Wow. Um. Yeah, so it's really cool. It's um so this was spun long draw, which involves because it's shorter fibers and you can see it's kind of fuzzy because of the long draw. Yeah. And this was spun short backward draw, but really, really fast because I did not want where's the end? Uh oh. <laughs> where, where, oh, that's the wrong side. Um I did not want even though there is a lot of twists with longer staple wools. 
you don't need as much twist to hold them together. Yeah. So I didn't want a ton of twist in this. So that for me, I'll do the thing that I was telling us to do earlier. Well, the crochet hook. So speaking of Lester, um, our friend Amy and her husband. Ross Farms. Ross Farm. I don't remember his actual name, but she calls him Scooter, Scooter Pie. Pie. <laughs> yeah. You can see the twist that I would get on a two-ply of that. Yeah. So it's not a whole lot of twist. I should go like that. There you go. Ooh, but it's... It's pretty, though. Yeah, I like it a lot. It's a cool... And they'll have... Um, Ross Farms will also have ooh, Lester Longwolves, and they were featured in Ply. Yep. And they'll this, be at SSK again thing? this year, yeah. so... And they'll be at Maryland Sheep and Wool, so oh, we can harass them there. And she's got a podcast, which is Transient Wool Merchants, which is really fascinating. It's her and another woman. Um, it's an audio podcast. I like how I point with my crochet hook to my earbuds. So she you know also is on Instagram, and it is lambing season, baby, because there have been so many baby lambs born. Yeah, she lost one. She lost weird. one, but still, like, and there's still lots to go, apparently, before May. Yeah. But overall, I mean, those little lambs come out, and they're like two, three pounds. Like they're just... The one that she lost was like a pound. Yeah. Mama was not ready. But still, I mean... It's good, like, baby fever to watch it, you know. Cause you oh, yeah. Because <laughs> you're like, I could totally have a lamb. My neighbors would be so chill with that. So. And then you realize that that's not a good plan. <laughs> Ever. Um, although, like, a little Jacob would be so cute. Yeah. Jacob's had the little horns. Oh, they're so adorable. Um, so. Off topic. Yeah, congratulations to Ross Farms on being in the ply issue of the Lester Longmole. Yeah. Very cool. Um, and I haven't gotten my issue yet, so... I haven't either. We'll have to review it when it comes in. Yeah, we should get it at some point this week. Um, I'm always towards the end, because it took me for forever to renew. <laughs> the um, One of the prizes for the animal shelter, the puppy shelter giveaway, um, that the fundraiser for shelter dogs... The Reach Rescue. Yes. One of the prizes is a year of Fly Magazine. And we'll talk more about Reach Rescue yes. and favorite things. Anyway, um, one, two, three. That was it for me for spinning. <laughs> <laughs> I did ply the Angora, that purple Angora that's gorgeous, and got like 382 yards out of, um, or 360, some, 372 yards. There we go. Math. It's, it's awesome. Um, out of three ounces, but it's soaking. So we'll see it next week. Yep, you will. I don't like showing. I'm getting to the point where I over spin a lot on my plying, and sometimes that's intentional, and sometimes it's not, and sometimes it's just how I spin. But I like adding lots of twist. So if I show you stuff when it's not, and the twist comes out when you soak it and thwack it, you lose like 10% of your twist. So when I took like this off the bobbins, it was all squirrely looking. Yeah. Um. So I like showing finished yarns that have been finished, which I mean by finishing is um, they've, I set my yarns by putting them in warm water with a little bit of soak and letting them sit around 30 minutes. And then I, I squish out the water and I hang them to dry with no weight on them. Um, and it's kind of like blocking. Yeah. So it would be like, if I didn't do that, it would be like me showing lace that had not been blocked right. as a finished object. It's, that finish step that takes it from like meh to awesome. So there you go. Um, so I'll show it to you when it's been finished. I, don't, I just don't like showing things that haven't been finished. Well, that's a total lie because I share things that aren't finished all the time. They, it all makes right. you look better when they're finished. It, does, it, looks, it makes me look like a good spinner versus <laughs> a squirrely spinner, which I am 99% of the time because um, my feet want to go fast race car driver style um we have a question from will you knit with me which might be the best ravelry name, name ever um have you either of you ever dyed your own yarn and would you show would you do a show with a yarn dyer showing us how to do it would either of you ever make knitting design dyeing or teaching your full-time career that's from nancy so the first question, have either of you ever dyed your own yarn? 
Um, Laura did used to, she had uh, a yarn line that she did primarily for our local yarn shop. Yeah. I still have three skeins of it. Do you? Why didn't you G-stash that junk? No. You can't get that anymore. That's not junk. Um, um, so I died, and I died for my local yarn shop, and I died a club's worth. So maybe I died total, like, 300 skeins, maybe. I helped Laura die maybe 20 skeins, and I would never do that for a living, I don't think. That is hard work. It is back-breaking work. Um... And it's lots of fun, and it's very cool, but people who die for a living are amazing individuals. Yeah. And that's just not for us. Now, we did, when we went to yarn school, we both died fiber, yeah, too. It's cool to do it sometimes. I wouldn't want it for a job. There you go. Um, I kind of feel like that's 99% of my life. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool to do sometimes, but not in order to earn money. And as far as... Um... Doing a show with a yarn dyer showing us how they do it. I think that would be a cool idea. Um, but there is a caveat that some dyers sort of like to have their secret sauce and keep it secret sauce, like the way that they do things. Maybe it's the way that they set their dye or the way that they apply it or whatever to get the effect. Um, but we do know several dyers who are perfectly open to doing it. I so. could talk to Gail yeah. at some point. Now, I will say that there is an awesome, at least one podcast. Oh, that's what I was going to say about transient wool merchants. So Ross Farms is a shepherd mm -hmm. that does very unique. And all her yarns that she has are milled and they're natural colored. And then the other person on it is a dyer, like a professional dyer. So it's a really interesting show in that they go to stuff like SAF, and then they talk about the SAF experience from people who are actually working booths at SAF. Yeah. So that would be an awesome audio podcast. I'm still pointing to my ears. Also, um, Laura. Jinx. Yeah, yes, Jinx, Dyer's Notebook. Dyer's Notebook. She, which is a video podcast, which is amazing. She does a lot of interviews with people, and then she does a lot of um, how-tos as well. So um, that would be one to check out. I don't know whether or not she's done one on dying. Um, I'll have to ask her. But, she does. Uh, that's an, she another does. great one to check yeah. out. And then um, Dana of Just One More Row. She, it's an audio podcast. Her and Brittany. Sometimes Dana will discuss dying. Um, more like the business side mm -hmm. than the dying process, maybe. And on the business uh, side, I know Heather yeah. of Highland Handmaids also does that. Heather does She a discusses lot. a lot of the business end of it. I don't know that she's ever done uh, This Is How I Die Yarn episode, but she does discuss, you know, how she processes payments and how tax works if you're an indie business and that sort of thing. So Yeah, so those are all awesome options. Um, making knitting design, dyeing, or teaching your full-time career. That would be really rough for me. Um, because I like things like healthcare benefits <laughs> and I think like the people who do designing full time, that's, that would be hard. That would be extremely difficult for me. Um, just because I'd have to be publishing like five to six patterns a month yeah. and teaching is kind of like you're on the whim of your popularity almost yeah definitely at that point. so it's and dying's the same way it's definitely like one of those careers where when you're doing well you really have to squirrel away yeah. um and because there is going to quickly become a time when you are not and that's just like the nature of retail like right. retail slows down in january february that's just how it goes um so you have to kind of figure out how to make that work for you. And for me, um, it's just because I'm single on my own. It's just not an option that I would feel comfortable doing because I have to, I have a house and stuff. <laughs> I don't know that I can make it work um, to a point. And also, I don't think I'm creative enough to put out five, six patterns a month. Um, I don't know that. I don't know that I could do that like long term. That would be difficult. Teaching would be super fun. And I do that full time. <laughs> but teaching knitting would be awesome. Um, if I was going to do something in the yarn industry, it would be owning a yarn shop. Like that would, and I kind of have like an idealistic version in my head of how owning a yarn shop would be super fun. 
but at the same time i know that it's a business and it's lots of hard work yeah and there's a ton of hard work that goes into owning a yarn shop it's got its own set so. of stresses oh yeah anyway would you do any of them full time because uh, you, your life is a little bit different than mine none of the items listed i don't think i would design dye or teach for a living i would love to find a way <coughs> to make um crafting my job <coughs> excuse me but at the same time I, I feel like then I wouldn't enjoy it as much that's true so as much as I like to pretend that it would be great to quit my job and you know make the knit girls full time make the knit girls full time and <laughs> Michael keeps hounding me to merchandise and sell t-shirts and stuff and I'm like like, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> do that, you know? Special stuff, sure, but not like... Damn the man! Save the empire! Yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I, I wonder if it would still be fun if it were my job. That would be my concern. I would love to not work, no. though. That'd be great. Dude, it'd be awesome. Not um, working at all like this past month was pretty cool. <laughs> until I'm going to have to make up those freaking snow days on Saturdays. All right, so I hope we answered your question. Um, <laughs> or and or did not get too off topic. Yeah. So we have a book review. We do. It's so amazing. Yes, it is. Did you it's... notice that two of our favoriteest people ever, yarn, are being used in it? We know it's... dyers who are in this book. <laughs> we know Rachel Coopy too. Yes. So this is our second volume of Socks. Um. Oh no, <laughs> that was an oh no because I messed up. Like. I don't know. Um, Go back to the beginning. Rachel Coopy is a UK designer. She is, and she's amazing. And she's adorable as well. Just just as adorable as you could want. Um, this is actually her third book of socks, though, because she had a book that she did with Rowan, too, I feel. But this is, like, socks. Self-published yeah. as well, yeah. Um, this book does retail for $27 in the U.S., depending on currency exchanges. It has a wonderful um, visual index. Yes, there are 17 patterns, I believe. And like Laura mentioned, there's a visual index. A lot of these are unisex, mm -hmm. um, which I think is great. Some of them are super intricate. Some of them are, you know, you could do while watching television. Um, there's a stock net pattern in the front called Dave. Which uses another crafty girl yarn. <laughs> yes, and so that's one of the people that, um, that one of the dyers that we know. I will tell you one thing that I really like about this book is the hands that are not, that go along with the socks. So in every picture with the socks, there's like the money shot, and a lot of them have other hand knits, which is really cool. Yeah. Makes me happy. Um... Like, I think that's one of her hats from one of her other books. But there are nice, clear photographs. Each um, pattern has, like, seven or eight photographs. It's craziness. Yeah. And there's close-ups from all angles, which I always appreciate. I like seeing the back, the front, all those angles. And um, Dave actually has two different options for heels, an afterthought heel and um, a heel flap version. So that's pretty cool. And like Laura mentioned, it's got, um, when the knit is worn and it's shown with another hand knit, she tells you what the knit is. So the hat in the previous pattern was the Percy hat, also knit by Rachel Coopy, or designed by Rachel Coopy. Mm -hmm. And this um, Socket to Me Eugene, which is the second pattern, is... Oh, that's stoker. I love that. Yeah, is worn with a stroker, which is a, an Isolde Teague pattern. And I love this, the sock. Yes, it's, it's got like three different stitch motifs that go down. Really, really clever. But it's a lot simpler than it looks. Um, mm -hmm. It's essentially just knit and purl, but it's done in interesting ways. Um, like Laura mentioned before, there's several pictures of each pattern, front, side, and rear. Very clear charts. And another thing that I really appreciate about Rachel's designs is there are at least three sizes. So there's an 8-inch circumference, a 9-inch circumference, and a 10-inch circumference. And it gives you what the finish measurements are, but also um, basically the ease. So the finish, it'll fit an 8, but you're knitting 6 and a quarter. So it tells you 
um, what the ease is and what your foot length should be in order to do a good fit, have a good fit. So that's really, really cool. She also does um, circular needles and DPNs and uses both in tutorials. I really like the afterthought, um, the afterthought heel combined with the zigzag pattern, which is an Orville Love Socks. I love a lot of things about this pattern, but I especially love the models because they are so just normal people, just mm -hmm. normal looking, normal people. You know, this guy and this girl, they're just hanging out. They both got these matching pairs of socks on. And again, there's several pictures of each one. And everything's really well styled as well. Yeah. Um, it's got everything. I mean, it, she designs not only with indies, but also with main, you know, labels like Lorna's Laces, you know, mm -hmm. which is a very well-known label. There's a good combination in here. There's also a lot of British yarns mm -hmm. um, because it, she is from the UK. Right. So if you're one of our viewers from overseas in Europe area, you might be able to find these yarns. Um, over there, but also things like Another Crafty Girl and Lady Men Fiber Arts you can easily find right. in the U.S. So it's a good mixture of what's available. I like Delbert a lot too, which is out of the Lady Men Fiber Arts Spotlight. Yeah. But it's got that cool cable that crisscrosses down. Yeah, it's got a lot of detail in it. Um, but it's still thin enough. I, I find some cabled socks are so bulky that it's impossible to wear them inside of shoes. Mm -hmm. uh, but these actually look as though they would fit perfectly fine. Um, and I do like that in a lot of these, especially in the unisex patterns, she, 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 they've been knit twice. So you can see what they yes. look like in more than just one color of yarn. Mm -hmm. So, um, and man, do I love digital books where you can just zoom in and out. That makes life so awesome i love otis which ones are you showing now um these are still the same oh, okay um Delta. is it you okay i love otis probably my favorite socks in the book because too. i have all these like little like when i saw that i was like oh you know what that be perfect for all these little space cadet minis i have you could use that for that That's color true. work and it would be like all the mini skeins that you have that are left over um, if you were in a mini skein club or something else, you could easily, or even a gradient yarn. That's true as well, yeah. It would be super cool on those. It's enough to make me want to maybe do a color work sock again. Maybe. <laughs> it's but it's really pretty. <laughs> I know, and it reminds me of the flying geese pattern a little bit yeah. from quilting, mm -hmm. which is one of my favorite quilting patterns. So those are super cool. I like them a lot. And there's also just rounds of just plain... Um, a stripe so like it's color work for a little bit right and then it's that plain stripe so the charts only the um, chart itself is only 10 rows but four of those are just two different stripes right. two row stripes so it would be really easy to uh, accomplish especially if you were new to color work I really like the Sydney socks as well because there's so much texture mm -hmm. going on you've got They're Reverse gorgeous. stockinette, you've got your twisted stitches that pop on that reverse stockinette, and then you've got this beautiful braid cable that goes along the front. It's just a stunning pattern, one that I would really like to knit. Um, and it's knit out of Madeline Tosh sock in the neon peach colorway. I really like Ernestine, too, because it's got a motif that's continued throughout the whole sock it's really more gathered like the motif occurs more often at the top and then it gets more spaced yeah, out as it, it goes to the it graduates in size mm -hmm. i love it when stuff does that and that would be perfect for men or women and that's out of uh fiber spates the vivacious four ply mm -hmm. or baby long legs Flump merino sock. <laughs> Flump is like the new awesome word of the day. That is pretty cool. Um, but again, it's knit in several different colors, so you can see what it would look like in several different colors, which is super cool. Yeah, I love this guy. Whoever this model is, <laughs> he is cracking me up. Um, he looks so happy. I love models that look like they are happy. Yeah, and there's several like pictures this... in here where he's cracking a joke and the girls laughing. Yeah. Um, I also like the last pattern in the book is called Wilbert and it's knit on um, yes. a yarn I haven't heard of, Eden Cottage Yarns. 
Um, and it's got a really cool, um, again, it's knit on reverse stockinette with this small braid detail that weaves in and out. And it's knit for both men and women. And you can see the guy cracking up again. Yep. Hilariousness. He makes me laugh. The back of the book has some tutorials. There's um, picture tutorials on how to do an afterthought heel, how to Kitchener stitch, how to do a long tail cast on, and um, sources for where to get the yarn that's found in the patterns. And so actually very... super helpful information of yes. the sock length. So if you're a size 10 US, the sock length when finished should be and a quarter and it does it has both men and women's listed which i think every sock book should have this seriously um so there are eight patterns in this book no more than that eight nine ten eleven twelve twelve patterns okay. um one is the plain sock net socks which would be a great beginner pattern if yeah. you're just especially since she goes into things like kitchener stitch and long tail cast on but then you could easily this is a book that you could just be learning how to do socks yeah. and then Row. work your way through it definitely and she gives um, love to each of the individual yarn companies and tells you where yes. you can get that yarn which is always a nice thing to do so we are biased we love rachel we love her stuff yeah. and she was so nice to send this to us and this is coop knit socks volume two yep it retails for 27 dollars as a digital download in the u.s you can buy it in um, a paperback copy uh, as which well gets you a uh, digital copy as yes. well. Definitely. So something to think about for sure. Yeah. Um, love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Want to knit all the socks. I know. We just need the time. Yeah. Um, what are you reading? All the things. <laughs> um, I finished reading just last night. Um, the Breakers series, which is a really long, maybe it, it felt really long because it was three books in one download. Um, it's a post-apocalyptic um, aliens send a plague to kill off most of mankind sort of book. Um, and it was good. Uh, I, I wouldn't put it in like top ten or anything, but it was good. And now I just started, I, I went out and found this list of um, Reddit's top 50 science fiction novels of all time okay. and so i'm working through some of them uh, and one of them was in a book called hyperion by dan simmons that sounds familiar it's part of a whole series something kanta hyperion kanta series it's very it's science fiction um yep. i'm not far enough into it to tell you whether it's post-apocalyptic or anything yet it's set like 500 years in the future but um, it's good so far. I'll have to check out the list. I always look like looking at lists of yeah. what people consider their tops. Yeah, I just started it last night at like 11.30, which is always a bad idea because I was up until 2 a.m. <laughs> reading. And um, I think that's an awesome idea. Well, yeah, except when you have to get up for work. Well, yeah. Uh, I finished The Furies of Calderon, which was the Jim Butcher book, the first in that yeah. series. Um, it did take me a little while to get into it. But mm -hmm. by about halfway, I really cared about the characters and was interested. I like that one. So I downloaded the next one, which is Academ's Fury. And I'm also I'm listening to that and The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer. There are really good things about The Art of Asking. Yeah, it's good. I like Amanda Palmer is a little bit crazy and a little bit awesome. And, you know, I don't agree with every single She's, thing she says. Uh, but Neil Gaiman's partner. Yes, she and Neil Gaiman are married. Um, and she's a little bit crazy, but she's... It's, she's very good, and she's narrating the book, so it's a it's a good listen. So that's what I've been reading and listening to this week. She crowdsourced for something, correct? She like it's actually holds the record for. Um, she crowdsourced for her album. She was trying to reach like a hundred thousand dollars, and she did well over a million. Wow! So, um, yeah, kind the book is all about you know making yourself vulnerable by asking for help and how people really do actually want to help but you know right. we're in this culture of not being comfortable asking so i think that's very true anyway um i have read so last week was um the beginning of the month is always like a big week for big name authors releasing mm -hmm. 
the next in a series. So four next of series books came out and I immediately read them. So the first was Dead Heat by Patricia Briggs. It is one of the Alpha Omega book series. Um, I love Patricia Briggs and the Alpha Omega have always been my favorite. I love Charles and Anna. They are paranormal urban fantasy with a little bit of romantic, but not really. I mean, it doesn't take over the story. It is not at all. It's very briefly mentioned. Um, this one was not my favorite. Um, the series is kind of winding down, but I also have this thing where by, I think this was the fourth, fifth maybe in the series, by the seventh book in the series, I'm typically done. So, yeah, it was um, that way with like Sookie Stackhouse and. Yeah, like you really, and I love, I love how Patricia Briggs writes. Definitely one of my favorite authors of all time. But I'm going to, I also read it really fast at like 2 a.m. <laughs> so I'm going to have to go back and reread it. Because it was like the third of these books that I read in one day. <laughs> so, you your mind. money's worth out of that Kindle, man. <laughs> that was the best birthday present ever. My third Kindle. <laughs> I keep destroying Kindle. And it's not like I destroy them by like dropping them or something. I literally burn them out. <laughs> um... The second book that I read, these really are in order, is Pocket Apocalypse by Sean McGuire, who has a great urban fantasy um, evil fae series, which I read like the first three of and then again lost interest. But I really like this series. It's a very like cryptoid hunters. Mm -hmm. So um, basically there's all these cryptoid type creatures that exist and there's this family that kind of breaks off from this... Uh, there's a society that wants to just kill them all. Like, no, they exist. Let's kill them all type thing. Awesome. And this family broke off and um, they want to protect, but also have like a community type relationship with these cryptoids. So not every cryptoid is going to be good, but not every cryptoid is immediately evil either. So it's kind of like that protection, but also create a community. And this one takes place in Australia um, the first two books in the series are the oldest daughter's point of view. The second two, and then they take place in New York. The second two are from the oldest son's point of view. And they take place, the first one is in Ohio. This one is, and it has to do with Basilix and Medusa. Oh. And this one takes place in Australia and it has to do with werewolves. But werewolf is um, like, uh, whatever the disease is, like repeat, whatever. Um, becoming a werewolf is something like a disease similar to rabies in this. So it's very, very interesting. Um, and it goes into some cool Australia stuff, but it's very like cryptoid hunters type stuff, like Sasquatch. And it's interesting. Um, and it's entertaining. So that's always a good one. Of Steam and Silk by Beck McMaster. Is, is that steam punk? Uh, it's a steampunk. Steam <laughs> Oh, my varied tastes. Um, it's steampunk. It is like the sixth or seventh in a series. It's good. Um, vampires, but vampires, again, it's kind of like rabies, where vampires are not romanticized at all. They are killers, and um, it's got steampunk elements, and I really enjoy it. I think this one's, again, the series is kind of going a little bit. Yeah. It's ending. It's ending. It's wrapping stuff up. There's only so many minor characters you can have. Yeah. Um, and then Vision in Silver by Ann Bishop is a very interesting series. It is pure urban fantasy slash horror. More heavy on the horror. Um, none of these books are appropriate for children. Visions of Silver, I actually read the first one when I was at your house that summer, and I could not sleep for days. Like, it is pure... <laughs> I mean, there's werewolves, but these werewolves will tear off your face and eat them. <laughs> like, it is not happy. Basically, the premise is... So um, why did you continue to read the second... Because it's so good. It's so well written. Like, it's horror. But, and I don't typically... I'm not, like, a Stephen King girl. I'm not... But you know how Stephen King really takes, like, the emotional... Like, 
it's not just people getting their faces eaten off. It's also know, like he's brutal to his characters. Like you think, oh, yes. he won't kill off his main character. That dude's dead as hell. Yeah. No. But well, there's that in this, but also it's a lot of psychological horror, yeah. which I really appreciate in both Stephen King and this. But basically, humans are the lowest totem pole in this, um, in this series. Like they are, you know, the lowest totem pole, and they have kind of invaded the U.S by colonization, but there's this whole other society of, like, elementals, including werewolves and um, vampires, but not, again, there's no romance, there's no romance in this at all. This is basically pure horror. Um, and humans, when they make a mistake, like, oh, you know, we're supposed to, you know, share the resources. Well, water is taxed, and that's how the others control humanity, is they tax stuff, like the land is all rented, so if they decide that you're not fulfilling the agreement, they just kick you off hmm. by killing you. Water is rented, basically. It's taxed. Um, so it's a really brutal society, and when humans don't act in a, w a way that the others appreciate, they die. Like, it's really an interesting premise. Um, Vision and Silver is the, the third. There's, um, I think the first one begins with Red. But it's really an interesting, well-written... All three, four of these are well-written series. I highly recommend all of them for very different reasons. But again, none of them are YA or kid-appropriate. <laughs> like, not even a little. <laughs> and Vision and Silver definitely is more on the brutal side of... I, see, I want to say it's almost urban um, fantasy, but really it, it's more horror. I don't know. Anyway, that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> so um, before we get into favorite things, I wanted to mention that if you are attending SSK, all the scholarship entries have been posted in the thread and you have yes. the rest of this week up until Saturday night at midnight to vote for your um, favorite entry in the scholarship thread. Um, you, you have know, to you be have an to SSK this. attendee yeah. to vote, one vote per person. And we opted to set it up for public voting only because we don't want there to be any sort of suspicion or thought. So by public voting, you mean people post their vote and right. therefore it's all up on the up. Right. So that nobody can, can try to suggest that Laura or I sort of uh, picked the person that we wanted. No. So... We put it out there, no names, no locations, or any of that in the um, entries. And this way you just vote for the entry number that you think deserves it the most or was your favorite. And it's sponsored by Three Waters Farm. Um, that's sure, Marianne. Thanks. Yes, yeah. threewaterspharm.com. They have a great top of the month club, uh, which is really reasonably priced. And if you want to just totally blow your budget, follow Marianne on Instagram, Three Waters Farm. <laughs> She's like, just gorgeous. Spindle. Every other day, she posts combos of like special <gasps> colors and like put together, and it's just it's always so beautiful. It makes me want to buy all the things. She also writes gorgeous haikus. Did not know that. She does on Instagram. She'll post a picture like of their house or of the barn and write like a haiku about it. Oh, it's really cool. interesting. Multi talented. I like, I like interesting people. Um. We are working with Three Waters Farms for a spin along, which we'll be yep, we'll be talking more about in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, so it's not going to be specific to SSK people. It'll be everybody, anybody who wants to join. Um, like Laura mentioned, we'll be doing that later this month. Uh, our advertiser for the month is <laughs> someone we had before. <laughs> Yes, the Wolverine shirt person. Yeah, it's Travis Parker. Um, he has a, an Etsy shop called Hey That's Super. And if you're on our website, um, theknitgirls.com, his ad is there. And it's this shirt. It's the it's dark so knit. Funny. Yeah. Instead of the dark knight. Yeah, it's Batman knitting. And I, I think it's cute and funny. And his shirts are pretty reasonably priced. I think they're like 15 or 18 bucks. And he's got the Wolverine one, as well as lots of non-knitting, but sort of punny shirts. 
Yes. So if you're in the market for, you know, a cute little gift, you should go and check out his site. It's linked in the um, show notes. And I have some shirts to give away later this month as yes. well. So we'll be giving away some shirts later this month. So we wanted to thank him for sponsoring us. I'm super excited. Um, we have the fundraiser, the Reach we Rescue. Do for the shelter dogs. Yes. And she met her initial goal, so she's bumped it into the stretch goals. Which I think is wonderful. Um, it's for a shelter organization that houses dogs and cats. And she has all kinds of cool rewards. Some great, you know, fiber rewards. The, there's a ply subscription. There's wool pierogi bags. There's all kinds of great stuff yes. that she's got as rewards. So if you have extra cash and you want to support a great cause, you can check them out. They're linked in our show notes. So many good prizes for that. So cool. And then, uh, we have a giveaway. We do. But I want to show my quilting first. Okay. And Go then for it. I'm can... going to sit back and chillax then and knit. So most of what I've done this week is quilting. Um, sewing and quilting. Uh, and what I didn't realize until I had pieced the second quilt for the week was that my quarter inch seams are not accurate. Um, which is frustrating. It's not hugely... It's not a, a really... So what does that mean, like... So when you sew a quarter... So when you piece little pieces together... Yeah. So this is one that I'm working on that is not finished. This okay. is... A, it's called the Spools Quilt. It's by Thimble Blossoms. And it's meant to look like spools of thread. And there will be yes. lots and lots of them. And they'll all be, you know, put together on a, on yeah. a um, quilt. So this is the back. Uh -huh. And when you sew a seam... Let's see if I can see get one that you yeah. can see really well... The distance between that seam and the end of the fabric, when you're piecing, as a rule, is usually a quarter inch. So if it's all off the same distance, then though, they'll still fit together like, fine. Yeah. But your measurements will be off. Like so, the whole quilt will be off. Right. But a little bit. But okay. it'll fit together. It's like a gauge. Right. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, Let's speak some knitterly language that I might understand. <laughs> It's gauge on a level of millimeters, like okay. difference. So, and I've, there's all these great tutorials online of um, if your quarter inch isn't a quarter inch, this is try this. If this doesn't work, try this. You know, so there's lots of great things to try, and I'm working through them. But so, what kind of sewing machine are you sewing these on? Um, this is one that I bought from Row. It is a Genome, Genome, Genome Memory Craft 6600. Genome. And um, I bought a table from Ikea, and Michael made it a drop-in for me, which is great. It's great on my wrist. Michael's amazing. Michael is the guy you want in the apocalypse. Um, and I've got a quarter-inch foot. Still doesn't get it right. Um, so basically, I'm testing moving the needle and putting um, stitch guides. and all. I'm testing a bunch of stuff, but I didn't realize until last night... Are you, like, sewing on paper to test it, or what are you sewing no, on? No. Um, well, you... I'll talk about it next week when I figure out the problem. Like, break it down for me. <laughs> I will, but we're already over an hour, so I'll talk more okay. about it next week. Um, so, anyway, this is one of the quilts that I'm working on. This is... I, I've done all the, the piecing for the rest of it. I've just got to sew the tops on them. And I learned the difference between pressing and ironing. These are different things. How are they different? Because I don't know. Ironing, you're going back and forth. Yeah, pressing, you're just pressing, going Pressing, you're going up and down. Yeah. Um, and the reason that you want to press instead of iron, if you're doing piecing especially, is because if you iron, you can stretch the piece, which immediately warps your measurements. Um, like a CD in a hot car, according to one of the blogs that I read. <laughs> um, whereas if you're pressing, you're not stretching the fabric. Yeah, you're just going up and down. So here are the things that I quilted this week, that I pieced this week. I haven't done any actual, like, quilting layers together or anything. Um, after three times of getting the sashing measurements wrong for Laura's quilt, I finally got them right. Um, I'm this gonna... is my I'm excited I'm getting into quilt phase. All right, I'm going to unplug. If there's feedback, I'm sorry. But I, there's no way I can keep these in and show you. So I'm going to turn it up a little bit, and then I'm going to unplug. Okay. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. All right. I can hear me okay, too. Yes. I have stuff behind me. Okay. So this is Laura's. And 
It is 12 squares with bashing. And I have not decided whether or not I'm going to add a border because it's already um, twin size width, but I might add some anyway to make it wider and longer because it's not long enough to cover you because you're tall. I am tall. Um, so it's all book related fabric that I got a while back. That's so cool. It's got reading frenzy kittens. Yes. So um, it's just simple disappearing nine patches with sashing. There's no pattern. I just sort of made it up. And lots and lots so of colors. Cute. I love it. So that one is Laura's. Umberto will love it too. Yeah. I ended up with a couple of extra of these big squares, and I thought, well, I'll make Humberto a quilt, and then I'll be like, no, because he'll ignore it and get on yours anyway, so. That's what he does with the Steelers quilt. <laughs> Your mom made him. And then this was um, part of a class that I took at QuiltCon on color value, and I assembled the pieces. Oh, you can see it's so much better on camera. That's so cool. Um, so it's color value and how dark and light and medium colors contrast with each other. I couldn't see it this well when I took the picture, but now that I see it on camera, it's very obvious. Which is good. That's what it should be. Yeah. So, it's small, though. It's more like a kid size quilt. It's so a lap quilt. It could be a wall hanging or something. I'm not certain. So, we'll see. But I, this was... Um, I can't remember the, it was a layer cake, but I can't remember the um, name. I'll look it up and put it in the show notes. So you could do borders around that and make it bigger. I by could, doing but because of the um, offset design, I'm not certain how that would look. So let me plug back in here. So we'll see. I don't know. I haven't just, I mean, it's, it's perfectly fine. I'll probably just leave it until I decide what to do with it. I just, yeah. It's not like fabric goes bad. Yeah, thank goodness. <laughs> um, and that's it. That's the quilting and sewing I've been working on this week. It's pretty spectacular, dude. Yeah, I'm happy with it. I would like to have um, these pieced by next week. They probably won't be assembled like all together, but I would like to have the individual squares pieced. Oh. We'll see. I got my fancy cutting table, so I got to test it out. I'll talk to y'all. What are you going to cut for a son of your fans? Cut <laughs> All the things? I would just be cutting like a mad person. Like, I need to cut the little I, It came with like hexi templates and half square triangle templates and like all the things. So we'll see. Oh, I would do all the things. Just <laughs> random little. You could make pillows with all like oh, just random I stuff. I could, but I'm, I'm just, I have to assemble the table first. That's <laughs> what <laughs> so Michael's there for. So, um, but we do have giveaways right we do so we're totally drawing for one place. right we're drawing for lost up. city knits our random number generator oh yeah it was that beautiful lace scarf that um yes. she designed it is the may emma scarf and then this gorgeous skein of the coral reef north pasture alpaca lace which is 100 percent alpaca so beautiful it's really really pretty so what numbers are we picking? I for... don't know. I'm not there yet. Hold on one second. <laughs> it's between... I almost said 1100. We really need to do a new shit up and take my money, Craig. We do. It's 1100. I think I'll do that. Um, 160. All right. So between two and 160, I have not pushed the button, but I will push the button. And the result is number 26, which should be on the second page. 26. Try Linda, who's got gorgeous spindles as her thing. Her avatar, it's Linda from Southampton, Pennsylvania. Oh, cool. And she says, I think the La Fite shawl is gorgeous. So I'm probably totally mispronouncing that. Well but, known uh, for our mispronunciation. <laughs> no, at this point. If you don't appreciate that, then. <laughs> Anyway, um, so try Linda, contact me, Lala, on Ravelry, and I will send it out to you. Thank you so much, Chris and Denise, for giving us that to give away. And we have another skin of that yarn that, of their yarn that we'll be giving away at a future time. Right. But for this week's giveaway, I am giving away 
actually, the lovely people at Chuck Heaton are giving away another. It's the same kit as what I have. Yeah. It's and in the same have. colors. So you can pretend you're me. <laughs> so, so it's in the mustard and the gray. Yeah. With the pattern and one of their cards in this super cute little bag. Which now I can't get things back in. And I'm so like a mad person. So what is the prompt for this to enter this giveaway? Oh. We'll put it on the thread. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have you get to their website because this not only comes in 30 different colors, it comes with tons of pattern support. So you can just tell us what your favorite color on their website or favorite pattern that they have available is. Um, so I same roles as that. always. You have to be a member of the group to win. One entry yep. per person. No chatter in the thread. And you do not get to pick your prize. You get the prize that is listed. In the thread. Yep. Very cool. And now that we have talked for nearly an hour and a half, um, I think that that's it for this week. <laughs> do you have anything else that you wanted to talk about? No. But, but next week, after you've had the whole week off, you're going to have all the things to show us, right? <laughs> That's the real reason why I could not knit and design and do stuff for a living, because I'm freaking lazy. That's, That's not why. it. You just get distracted really easily. Like, <laughs> okay. Last week, it was everybody install Trivia Crack on your phone. Oh, you need to play yes. Trivia Crack with me. I'm totally beating your butt at Trivia Crack right now. I haven't won a single game yet. <laughs> at all. I could let you have a pity win if you want. <laughs> So, um, you're the only person that I steal stuff from, though. Like, because you sure. started it. No. I just push the button. I don't even know what I'm doing half the time. I'm like, okay. It's like you can earn your own crown, your own piece. It's puzzle. basically a digital trivial pursuit. Yeah. Or you could steal Leslie's. Yeah. And Leslie started by trying to steal mine and <laughs> failed miserably. So now I'm like, I could. Plus, it's like everyone else is smarter than me that I play against. Dude. You are too. There but... are some some like sports questions. I'm like, I don't even know what sport this that's is. What, why like, are you asking? That's this? why I'm like, oh, Leslie doesn't know sports. Maybe I'll beat <laughs> her out by that one question. <laughs> so I'll try to steal your stuff. Like Lynn, I'm concerned about. Like I don't win against Lynn a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> so I won't try to steal her puzzle pieces because I'll lose mine. Like it's just given. So I'm terrible at science. My science questions are only 70% accurate. Uh, sports and history are where I suck at. History is not bad. Geography for me is pretty terrible. Okay, I think our entire audience has given up on us <laughs> at this point. Anyway, we're both on Trivia Crack. So yes. totally, totally play us on Trivia Crack. Um, and beat me because everybody does. <laughs> That's not true. Um, but until next Sunday, you guys have a great week. And if you are going to SSK, make sure to vote for your favorite scholarship. Ooh, and we have a payment due at the end of the month, too. Um, 31st? I can't remember if it's the 15th or the 30th. But yes, if you're going to SSK, check your... Um, your original email. Your original email. And, um, because some people who got in later, it's a different It's a different know. dates if you got in a little bit later, right? You should totally check that out. So that's it for real this time. Um, Y'all have a wonderful week, and you have a good staycation. <laughs> I'm going to have an awesome staycation. And uh, we'll talk to you next week. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all.